All right, good morning. Last night was crazy, so I got bloodshot eyes. <laughs> but it's okay, Jessica's gonna read this one. But I'll start with the prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this new day. We're thankful for the, the fun times we can have together. We're thankful for this avenue that we get to learn and grow and that we can use it as a means to meet new people and become friends and to help people and to share the gospel and to help them with their health and happiness. Pray that we could be patient and loving to all those who don't understand and that we can continue to be your good friends no matter what. We are thankful for <clears throat> helping us do hard things every day and to help continue to help us grow. We're thankful for this book and for the time the author took to write it and to do all the study that he did to help benefit us and we pray for a blessing for that and so that we can be able to understand what we read today and apply it. And we say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. We are on page 193. 193? Uh-huh. Part where it says they're crushing it. They're crushing it. Okay, I can't normally hear your timer, oh, so yeah. you'll tell me when to stop. <laughs> okay. like wave at me or something when it goes off. <laughs> okay, let me start it. Okay. <clears throat> All right, they're crushing it, and it's making me feel worse. Let's face it; it is human nature to compare ourselves to others, especially if we're on a path of growth. We become hyper aware of what others are doing in a highlight driven world. I love when authors and speakers simply tell us not to compare ourselves to others because it's bold. It will happen, except this reality. When you and I compare ourselves to others, we have two choices. The first option, stay stuck, let ourselves off the hook and be disempowered. It's easy to see someone else's success and think, well, if they're so far along, why even bother? We see their success as unattainable and create a narrative around why we're not good enough or capable of getting that far. This is the status quo of comparison, and it manifests in the following symptoms. Paralysis by analysis, hopelessness, starting and stopping, and ultimately giving up. If that doesn't sound good, you have the second option. See their success as your own greatness being reflected back to you. The moment you recognize someone else's success and greatness as a reflection of what you're capable of, everything changes. You're inspired by them and you're compelled to believe in yourself more deeply. You fall in love with the possibility. They're the real life proof you can do the same. <clears throat> you and I don't know everyone's story. They may be crushing it, or they may be in a world of hurt. We all have much more depth than we show the external world, and your perspective will either serve you or won't. If you want to remind yourself of the power of starting, simply identify the people you most admire and go back to the first iteration of what they've created. Read their first book, listen to their first podcast, watch their first acting role. You'll quickly notice that they once started somewhere too. And they had the audacity to keep going even when they weren't anywhere near as skilled as they are today. They believed in the process, celebrated it, and continued to improve 1% every single day until incremental progress turned to exponential results. I'm in a lot of pain. When people come to me and express their pain, I tell them to celebrate it. It sounds crazy and wild but I remind them of a powerful distinction. Your pain is your power and contains a gift. Sure, this sounds great on paper, but in the midst of chaos, it's the last thing you want to hear. You simply want your pain to be fixed, soothed, and healed. I get it. Here's why your pain is a source of power. It centers you and helps you focus on what truly is important today. It brings you down to the right here, right now, and eliminates distractions. We've all experienced this, a brutal workout, a tough hike, a relationship conflict, a painful injury, 
the moment we get called by HR to the boardroom and we're fired. In all of these examples, we become centered and fully present in the now. Your pain is your power and contains a gift. It's a box. (laughs) (laughs) In that place, we make powerful and bold decisions. The moment I was fired from my first corporate gig, I made a committed decision to start my fitness business. The moment I endured a painful breakup where my partner was unfaithful, I made a committed decision to work on myself in ways I'd never done before. The moment I experienced a rare debilitating lung condition and was on my deathbed, I made a decision to reinvest in my health. You've had countless of these moments too, and while they are no doubt difficult, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Right now, you may be in that state too, and I want to encourage you to make a committed decision now, not tomorrow, but this very moment. If the pain weren't readily available, you may not have the audacity to make that decision. You may be good enough or living in the land of maybes where dreams go to die. This seems boring. Highlight reels are sexy. The real thing isn't. If it seems boring to make 1% progress every single day, you're right. However, the alternative is to create sky-high expectations, get hyped up on dopamine, launch your 19th business, and never move the needle forward. I'll take boring results over pie-in-the-sky fantasies any day of the week. The truth is, no matter how excited and on fire you may be with your visions and outcomes, there are going to be long periods of boredom within them. Being in a rock band seems pretty exciting, right? Until you're on your 11th straight night in a random hotel in Omaha, Nebraska, and have yet and have to do yet another sound check. Being an actor or actress for a feature film seems amazing, right? Until it's 11.30 p.m. and you started makeup at 4.45 a.m. And you're bleeding out your eyeballs after doing the 17th take on the same exact scene and your supporting actors can't get it right. Being a best-selling author sounds pretty fun, right? Till you've written an entire book over the span of two years, then threw it out and started from scratch, and now you're experiencing an existential crisis. Boring is part of the process. Embrace it. If you believe you're going to be hyped up on passion and dopamine 24-7, you're playing the wrong game. Warren Buffett, the world's most celebrated investor, is known for having a pretty boring life and investing philosophy. Yet, at the same time, it's impossible to argue with his success. Yahoo Finance, Reinick2017, said this about his style. If Buffett's formula could be described in a word, that word would be boring. Wonderfully, profitably, enjoyably boring. (laughs) It's not the right time. Even after a 55 minute conversation where they left no detail out about how much pain they were enduring, they say, it's not the right time. Earlier in the conversation, this individual had told me how they knew they needed to stop living in fear and stop only using logic. They needed to make bold decisions. Steve, you've just identified how your lack of decision-making and living in fear is holding you back. Now, when presented an opportunity to create from a new place, you're telling me it's not the right time? Do you see a pattern here? Talking ourselves out of our dreams simply because of the season of life we're in or because of a calendar digit is a bulletproof way to get and stay stuck. It lets us off the hook so we don't have to summon the courage to make a decision and execute it. The right time is created by the power of a bold decision. The word decision means to cut off, to slice off what is no longer serving and move forward with clarity. The timing will never be right. Even if you can argue that today is a bad time because it's the holidays and you're on overdrive at work, it won't get better in February. Then you'll have a new issue replacing the old one and the vicious cycle will repeat itself. Create the right time in your life, and you'll never look back. I feel like that should be on a square. The uh, the word decision means to cut off, to slice off what is no longer serving. Right. Word of clarity. So. Where's good. the box for that? Box. <laughs> it needs a box. 
I can't figure out how I'm going to do that. As we mentioned earlier, the how is the graveyard to your dreams, where they go to die, buried once and for all. The how is where people stay stuck in a never-ending loop of research and analysis and an inability to execute. Without a doubt, if there's one place where we lose our initial excitement and enthusiasm over anything, it's here. I always smile when people go from the unlimited potential of their vision to the graveyard of the how. You can sense it in their voice and body language, their belief slowly self-destructing one moment at a time. The truth is you don't need to figure out the how, at least not yet. The how is not some grand plan, a blueprint, or a treasure map. It's the resistance showing up in full force. If you did have every step of your vision laid out, it wouldn't be yours. Or worse, it'd mean you were playing safe and small because we could easily identify every tiny step on the way to the peak of your mountain. Remember, when the what and why are bold and vivid, the how starts to reveal itself. It starts to reveal itself step by step, but you've got to have the audacity and courage to take those first few steps. Instead of figuring out every step of the how, commit, commit to one or two steps. Execute with blinders on. Stay consistent and then rinse and repeat. Use the 1% rule to begin to carve out your path and you'll notice the how becomes obvious. You'll realize it at the time, but also know you could have never seen it when you were starting out because you didn't need to see it. What will they think? Here's the truth. No matter what you do in this game of life, you will be judged. It's part of the human experience and we can't delete it from our reality. Was that the time? Yeah. Okay. That was perfect. I loved this book. What a good one. The obstacles are so real. Like, I see people on this team and every single one of them. (laughs) And myself and every single one of those. I just really like like the encouragement of just take the steps. Get your vision real clear Mm -hmm. and then take the first couple of steps and then the next steps will be there and then you take those and the next steps will be there and then you take those and because it makes total sense to me like if if everything is all planned out all the way to the end then yeah it's not it's either limited because you're not looking at all the different options and paths there could be because you're just focused on yours Mm. or it's not yours someone else made it because there is no way you could plan it out detail to detail from the beginning to the end because you've never been there yeah and even even when other people like give you a system when you Mm -hmm. do the system like you have your spin on it and like that yeah is what you own and that's what makes it yours well it's like i really like not having to figure out like reinvent the wheel with all the the plexus stuff i'm doing like i can just go oh i've hit this place what 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 are y'all suggestions yeah you know (laughs) but it's not like you guys are taking my hand and doing every little thing like detailing every it's it's mine like my posts are mine my story is mine Mm -hmm. my friendships are mine what I want to accomplish is mine, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> Makes you own it. That's right. Own it. Thanks for reading <laughs> today. Sure.